Hello and welcome to today's show. Now as always this is entertainment not instruction and I don't mean to be giving anyone any advice. Don't take his any advice. However today I'm going to replace an existing heat pump thermostat with a new fancy Wi-Fi thermostat. And here the thing is heat pumps aren't all wired the same way. So sit back watch as much of the show as you want I may or may not put some additional information at the tail end because we could get long really fast with this. But I'm going to try to give enough information to kind of give a, a general idea in case this is something you might just put in the back of your mind for your own use at some point in time. But remember, entertainment, not instruction. If you have real property to sell in the greater Murfreesboro, Rutherford County area, then call Dale to sell at Benchmark Realty, 615-409-SOLD, that's 7653, or 615-809-2323. Sitting before us is a thermostat. This happens to be for a heat pump, which complicates matters a little bit. But we're going to replace this with a Wi-Fi based smart home type of thermostat. Cue the hand model. Okay, now before I bought this thermostat, I had to be sure we could actually run it. Now, to do Wi-Fi connectivity, it takes quite a bit of power to do this. It has a backlit display and it has a lot of communication back and forth in order to give you the current readings outside from the internet. And so it does a lot of broadcasting back and forth. This is going to take quite a bit of power and it requires what is known as the C wire. The dreaded C wire as in Charlie. Now, comparing it to this one we had off of the uh, gas pack. It's a little different, same brand, but a different thermostat entirely. When I flip its little hood up, I see I had a space for two AA batteries. And the purpose of those AA batteries were to actually run the electronics inside this thermostat to close and open the relays, that kind of thing, to operate it. This one did not have a C wire. It just used the power from the batteries, and it was sufficient enough to run it for quite a long time. This thermostat, if we flip it down, we don't have batteries visible. And if I take it off, and you can see in the, if, you, if the monitor picks it up, I can't really quite see it on it, it'll flash that it says no AC power. So this is a good indicator to me that this particular thermostat did in fact have a C wire. It's power coming from the unit. It's the other side of the transformer coming from the unit. Now I do have batteries in here and a lot less frequently I have to change those batteries out because they're acting as backup to the thermostat for when power goes out but it's actually being powered from my unit. So I have a pretty good idea I have a C-wire in this unit. Now, Wi-Fi thermostats, like I say, like this, often have a C-wire. They have a requirement for a C-wire for that extra power. Now, not all Wi-Fi home connected type devices need a C-wire. But you'll probably find out we won't have features such as the backlit display. We won't be doing nearly as much communication like with the weather and that kind of thing going on here. Because all of that extra communication takes a lot of extra power. Listening and transmitting. Listening doesn't take as much as transmitting back to something. So you may be able to find a thermostat that does not require the C-wire. Now, before we ordered such, we would always come up here with our camera and take a picture of our wiring and then go down where it's convenient in front of the, the app. Honeywell has an app on the web, well not really an app, I guess it's on the website where you can check to see which thermostats are compatible. I can see that this is here. I've also taken a meter and checked between C and R to see that I actually have 
my 24 volts minimum. This is actually open terminal and it reads a little higher than that, but what it is is it tells me for sure that I have the power at the thermostat that I need to run Mr. Thermostat. If I didn't have that, I have certain other things that I might be able to do, such as using a thermostat, a Wi-Fi connected thermostat that does not have all of the features, or I might be able to do some reconfiguring of the wires here if I'm handy enough to do that. But that's a part for a different video. So what we would do here is inside of that box are some flags. We would come up here and we would label all of these colors based upon the current position on that terminal block. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break here, put the other thermostat on, and we'll talk about some more things. I'm going to stop here for a close-up on the old thermostat base. I've labeled the E-wire and the C-wire. Now, although I got the power turned off, I have taped off the C-wire and I've taped off the red wire. And here you can see a good picture of the terminal and its designations. And here we see what is fairly common in a lot of homes. When we pull this off, we see the original thermostat was mounted here. The new thermostat was mounted here and here. And we'll have a little bit of uh, repair work to do right there. In this shot, you see I've just trimmed around the frayed edges of the hole. And I'll take a little sheetrock mud and we'll clean that up. Probably won't do a lot around the hole itself because I don't want to break that loose and make it any worse. The thermostat's going to cover that. We have just plugged it in. And we have turned on the power. We're waiting for a little bit of the sheetrock dust to finally I need to come back here and probably paint that a little bit. And we're going to try to do the initial setup. We're going to do English. We're going to do home. Name of the thermostat. I'm going to change this to split. I'm going to hit done. Hit next. It does cooling and heating. It is a heat pump. Cooling changeover. Old wires connected to OB most common. I think it's actually heating changeover valve if I had it on the other one just right. But I'm going to try this first. Difference will be it'll be either cooling when it's heating or heating when it's cooling. I can come back and change that. Single stage wire, two stage, both Y in it. For cooling, it's one stage. I have a backup W2 E wire is connected. There are actually two wires and they have to be combined together. Do you want a Wi Fi connected? No, I'll do it later. And of course, because we don't have the Wi-Fi, this is not coming on. So we'll try it. We'll try fan. Turn it on. Okay. There it is. We can change our mode from heat to cool. Now this is where I check my heat valve. I go stick my hand under the register, see if I'm sending out refrigerated or cooled air or heated air. If I'm running air conditioner, I'll change that setting to switch it from calling for cool on the changeover valve to calling for heat on the changeover valve. And that's about it for right now. We have to do a little bit of patching. Can you see we've, we've fit right here was that hole. I had to back the uh, camera up a little bit. Whoops. 
and you can see we've patched our hole up top. We just need to put a little paint on it. And we set it level. Okay, we are up and connected. I haven't really changed much about it. I did have to switch that uh, changeover valve to what I thought it was when we were doing the initial setup. It said this is the default most common. It wasn't in my case. I didn't think it was, having looked at the other thermostat. This thermostat only has two-stage heat, which means we have heat pump on stage one, and when it falls back because it can't keep up, it would hit auxiliary, and then it would hit emergency heat which are three stages i don't have but two stages with this thermostat so i have to wire emergency and auxiliary together under the one input so that whenever it comes on it's really kicking on second and third stage it just bring it'll respond faster may use a little bit more resistive heat when it does a, if i have it do a big changeover switch it'll be past that uh, stage three dead band so they'll just come on together anyway not that big of a deal for me so i have a part number that honeywell says is actually a, a three-stage heat i don't know if it works with the lutron app i just bought this i knew this would work as far as a standard heat pump uh, heat pump and then backup heat i just combined both emergency and backup heat together works good don't use a second story at all so there's really not that big of a deal for me to put it on I do see that I have the patch job right above it. Haven't painted it. And again, you know, I don't use a second story. I have a room up here I use, a little utility room. I just keep the heat on up here, enough to keep the pipes from freezing on the, the upstairs bathroom and that sort of thing. So uh, I got to go downstairs and set it back in hibernation mode so that it doesn't run my electric bill up and we're good to go.